Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Beth Chats Books. Now before I get into this video I just want to do a quick update. I know I haven't been filming or uploading especially very recently and I felt really guilty about that the past week or so. I have been really really busy. So I don't know if I've told you guys or not so I just thought I'd lay it all out on the table here. At the moment I am transitioning to a new job so I was currently working at Debenhams and now I'm going to be working for a new company so I have had to do a lot of paperwork and I've had to finish the last couple of shifts at work so I've been very busy either doing paperwork or I have been working at Debenhams and then second of all I have currently been car browsing so this new job is a little bit of a drive away and it's a bit of an upgrade pay wise because I'll be permanently working instead of at Debenhams I was temporary part time so this is going to allow me to get a car so it passed a few months back which I told you all about so at the moment I've been in the process of any spare moment searching for car deals going to dealerships having a bit of a, a look and a bit of a test drive of cars so I haven't had much time to dedicate to you guys because it's either working, paperwork or car browsing. So from this week I start my new job and from next week I will get my hands on a new car. So I will be putting that on my Instagram so you can take a nosy about that but other than that I just wanted to let you guys know that's why I've been a little bit busy. But I'm back to normal. So obviously starting this permanent job I am going to have to fiddle around with utilize my weekends to bulk film and the distributing through the week but we'll see how that goes so this particular video i thought i would do a july favorites because the last couple of months i was really bad at doing favorites and i want to get this out of the way before i do my q a because that will be quite lengthy and i wanted just a quick intro back with you guys and get a bit used to filming something that's not going to be as long to edit so this is my July favourite. So the first things I want to talk about are some events that have happened in July. Now as I've previously just mentioned, July is when I was offered this new job. It's going to be an admin assistant role that's permanent Monday to Friday 9 to 5.30 which I'm very excited about. It's my first opportunity to really prove myself since I've graduated because I was currently just working like I said part time at Debenhams in the cafe and I really want to pursue a career at the moment. I don't have any definitive ideas about where I want my career to go and talking about those big philosophical questions like what career do you want to me at the moment and in the past year has been very claustrophobic and intimidating. I know I have a lot of potential to give, I know I want to do something very fulfilling and I've searched a few avenues but for now this job is a really exciting prospect because it's going to give me a bit more experience and let me see maybe where I can go and open up a few more doors for me. So I think the big scary question of where I want to go with my life, I'm just putting it on hold, getting quite excited for this new job and see what shall happen in the next year. So that was a big highlight for me. Another nice highlight was I hosted a barbecue at my house this month. I had friends I haven't seen in a long time came and it was really nice. We had sangria and my boyfriend just prepped all the burgers because I don't eat meat so I had him prep burgers for everyone and we had salad and loads of bits and it was really nice to have a bit of a chat and kind of catch up before everyone went away on holiday and so later this month we're meeting up again so it was, it's really nice for me because I haven't seen them in a while and I was a little bit anxious about keeping the relationship going and whether that would happen now I'm back and so I'm really happy that it that it is working and, and we are having a great time together so that was a big kind of highlight for me this month and then also a really big highlight was doing the live Instagram with Anthony Andrews this month that was on the 28th at 6 p.m British summer time I was so happy I did that Anthony was so welcoming and I really did feel like although I was very anxious and awkward about doing it live that it came across as genuine, that we weren't kind of talking over each other, that there wasn't this awkward tension. He made me feel completely at ease. So thank you so much, Anthony, for inviting me on to your live, for two, allowing me to participate in your book club that month, and three, for being such a gent and making me feel so welcome and comfortable. And I would definitely love to do a live with you again in the future. And thank you so much to everyone who watched that live. It was a bit nerve wracking seeing a lot of my friends as well pop on, as well as booktubers and book friends so it is intimidating but I'm so glad I did it and it's kind of got me on the bandwagon to do live videos so hopefully I can do some live videos with this channel very soon and the last thing I wanted to mention is my brother's graduation he graduated this month he went to Liverpool Hope and he did a politics and history degree and he came out with a 2-1 
So I was a very proud big sister. There's only a year and nine days between me and my brother. But I always feel like an older sister to him. He's got an older sister than me, who's four years older. But it was just really nice to share that day with him, parts of my family. So that was very, very good. So all in all, I had a very exciting and flourishing month. And then for TV, I want to talk to you about. So briefly, I will talk my way through these. So the first one I want to talk about is Doctor Who. So my boyfriend is a Doctor Who fan and we have slowly over the past month gone back and rewatched all the Doctor Who. So we started with Rose Tyler and Chris Eccleston, I believe is his name. And then we went through David Tennant and Catherine Tate. And then we're now on, I've forgotten his name, the one after David Tennant. And we prefer the David Tennant time period I guess if we've got to pick a time lord and my personal favourite sidekick is Rose Tyler so I find it quite sad that she's no longer around and you know he's replaced her but you know that's such is the way but um he loves them very much and I'm a bit hit and miss you know we watch them in the evenings before we go to bed and it's something that we've just allowed ourselves to watch but I know there's a massive amount of Doctor Who fans and so many people are really excited for the new series where there's going to be a female Doctor. So I thought I'd just let you guys know that we're catching up so that we can hopefully get to the female Doctor by the time it comes out. There's that one. And then obviously just a little reference to Love Island. I know people are a bit annoyed by how much Love Island is everywhere but obviously the final was this month and the end of it. So we watched it, we were obsessed with it last year but this year it didn't really have that same wow factor. I think the problem is with these ideas is they can only run on a train for so long and then they run out of steam. So obviously once you've watched the last series and this series there's a lot of similarities with how the show goes. There's a lot of tropey kind of styles of peoples or characters. So it kind of gets a bit repetitive and the amount of watching is excessive, whereas it could be kind of cut down. A lot of the drama that happened in this particular series did more than last year strike me as incredibly obvious that it had been staged. So I feel it lacked a little bit of the excitement that I had for it last year but well, obviously that's something I watched this month and then I want to talk about two more programs and then two more documentaries so the next program I want to talk about is I know this sounds really silly but we me and my family have been re-watching Harry Enfield and Chums on Netflix I want to say so Harry Enfield, obviously, this was before our time, we were quite young, this was in the 90s, I wasn't born when Harry Enfield and Chums came out, but we slowly started re-watching it, and it's been really interesting, I've been talking to my mum and my dad, and my mum and dad's partners about it, who remember all the interesting and funny jokes, so there's quite a spectrum of different little sketches, but they are very witty, very British I think and some of them are slightly blue in comparison to what we will be allowed to get away with now but the voices it's got the stereotypes of people from the UK but in a very um funny way it's quite cleverly scripted and I don't particularly like Kevin and Perry go large which is a movie that got made out of the sketch of Kevin and Perry but I think Kevin and Perry as a sketch is quite funny as the teenage of boys and what they get up to and there's a loads of other tropes and different things that we found quite funny and we've been enjoying it so we were watching that in the evenings during this month and it was a bit of light relief. And the last program I want to talk about is Glow which is the gorgeous ladies of wrestling that was on Netflix. We have currently watched two series so it's all a bit up in the air whether there's going to be a third but we're praying that there will be a third. It is very very funny so it's about the beginning of kind of female wrestling and how there's a lot of sexism it starts in the 80s there's a lot of sexism people think it's just pornography and all the kind of inner politics of the girls so there seems to be a bit of I don't want to give any drama away that there's already a bit of tension two people already know each other and their relationship currently is not in the best place and then they both get contracted to be the ladies of wrestling and so we see their relationship throughout the series and then there's a whole host of other characters and they all become a trope a caricature a kind of set figure so we have the brainiac um, the werewolf some interesting slightly racist um, and sexist characters as well 
characters know they're taking on these racist and sexist characters and it's it's part of that escapism of being these very caricature characters of, of that time period um it's fantastic the acting is amazing it's so dry and funny at points it's some of it is is quite upsetting content but it's overall a smashing comedy it's just laugh out loud and it kind of allows you to find humour through things that you previously would find uncomfortable to talk about. So all of those programmes I'm going to link down below so you can go and check them out. I think Glow everybody can get on Netflix. Some of these might just unfortunately be only on British TV and British catch-up TV. Again sorry guys. Then the next two documentaries I want to talk about is one of them I watched on Saturday night and that's the BBC2 documentary on Angela Carter and I found that really interesting I didn't previously know anything about Angela Carter as a person but this documentary spoke about her childhood and how she kind of been mummied about her marriage and the issues with that about finding love later on in life and having a child later on in life and then her life really being cut short by her illness and it talked about how she really wasn't respected and admired as much as she should be during her time how she found it really difficult to get published what i loved is other writers were talking about her jeanette winterson who i adore was speaking about her and, and how revolutionary her books were and how she probably wouldn't have labeled herself as feminist how she was more interested in trying to say that women are allowed to empower their body but obviously at the time they weren't really portrayed as that and then they had Margaret Atwood talking about a similar experience she'd had with her books being rejected by publishers until Virago I believe came into fruition and I found that really really interesting because Margaret Atwood, Jeanette Winterson are both people I really respect and admire as writers and as people and and as women so it was just a really empowering documentary I really enjoyed it so it's encouraged me to start reading the bloody chamber on audiobook so I am fascinated to know more about her and the second kind of documentary series that I watched there is a man I've forgotten his name and he's on radio 4 I believe and he's a really famous film critic and he likes critiquing all the recent films and he has a podcast I believe as well and he did a really interesting documentary I don't know how many people would find it interesting but I'll, I'll find it and I'll link it down below and it's part of a series which he critiques film genres so this film genre in particular was about the coming of age teenage film and it went through a whole host of films that I have actually watched and the tropes and the relationships it kind of was a very simplistic explanation and exploration of this theme for example if you do film studies this would all probably be very obvious to you but it went through things like the breakfast club muriel sparks's the prime of miss june brody their poet society and a whole host of others and kind of unpicked major themes that recur within these kind of teenage films about the first love about an adult figure who helps them come to terms with their identity aside from their parents the fact that a lot of teenage movies now allow the parents to have a backstory and a complexity between the relationship between them and their children so loads of different things but I actually found it really interesting to watch really interesting for me to make parallels between films that were quite old and, and more recent ones so I just thought I would pop that in there because I did enjoy that. So that is everything for my July favourites. I didn't really get much podcast listening done and I didn't do any more exciting things than that. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with a brand new video. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to be alerted for when any of my future videos come out. And I'll see you very soon. Bye now.